All eyes are going to be on the Gulf of Mexico this weekend and early next week. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas. In this video, we're going to take a look at a disturbance around Central America now that has moved into the Western Caribbean for the likelihood of development over the weekend or early next week and the potential and likelihood for this little disturbance to come towards Florida. We're going to talk about potential tracks, potential intensity, and the environment that this is working into. I'll show you some models as well. Towards the end of this video, most of this is going to be spent on that golf system, but we are going to take a look at what's going on with Franklin, expected to be a hurricane by the weekend, and two other waves that really aren't any of concern out in the Central Atlantic as well. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we are venturing through hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you find this content helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so first things first, where is the disturbance highlighted in red here by the National Hurricane Center? Now giving this guy a 70% shot to develop over the next seven days. It doesn't look like much, really doesn't look like anything right now. Just a flare up of thunderstorms, X marks where the quasi center is now. It's expected to just kind of hang out down here, meander back to the Yucatan and then back over water for the next couple of days. And then really once it gets up here, that's where it's going to have its potential to develop. Now, this is still not a foregone conclusion. I'm going to show you some ensembles. I'm going to show you some models in one second. But still, I don't think this is going to be a runaway freight train. And I will explain why in a second. So first, we're going to go with the Euro. The Euro is the stronger one. The GFS is coming a little more in line, as is typical. But nonetheless, as we fast forward through Sunday, still not a lot going on. I want to point out a couple of things here while we're watching. These lines here, these are known as isobars, lines of equal pressure here. When they are tighter, when you see a bunch of rings, that means we are developing the storm. The storm is strengthening. Right now, as of Sunday, it is still broad. It is still over land. So it really can't strengthen, of course, until it leaves land. So here we go, midnight on Tuesday, still hanging around the Yucatan Peninsula with some rain, but not really strengthening just yet. By the time we get towards Wednesday afternoon, this thing is likely already going to be on land. The most likely landing spot for whatever strength this is does appear to be Florida because of the steering currents. Nonetheless, there's Wednesday at 4 o'clock. It's a little stronger. This would depict tropical storm strength somewhere north of Tampa around the Big Bend area and then exiting out into northeast Florida. So again, this is the Euro representation. It has been the strongest of the bunch over the past several runs and again that would show middle to strong tropical storm strength from that depiction anyway from that latest model run the gfs it's showing something but it's still weaker now the solutions are similar through the weekend sunday this thing's still again on land it's very broad still so it's a very weak area of low pressure still kind of meanders as we get towards monday we don't even have a closed low pressure yet it's still hanging out here and it's still interacting with land it's not really until we get to tuesday here's four o'clock and still by this latest run of the gfs we have a little something trying to consolidate here but it's still not too terribly strong this would be a much weaker tropical system potentially even a tropical depression as it works its way in towards central florida it's still bringing tropical storm impacts potentially by the time we get towards tuesday and wednesday to florida but nonetheless, it keeps it on the weaker side. So again, just for timing here, this is not coming this weekend. It's something to pay attention to this weekend as we watch it develop. But in terms of any kind of potential impacts, that wouldn't happen until the early to middle part of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday timeframe. So we're keeping a close eye on that. I want to show you some of the environment now. Right now, that is the most important thing. Models are going to struggle with the intensity. It looks like the track kind of locked on, relatively speaking, where exactly it comes ashore, that would need to be fine-tuned over the next few days. But it does look like somewhere between the panhandle of Florida and southwest Florida is where this thing, again, however strong, comes on shore. We're first going to look at the water temperature. And then we are going to look at the environment because there are big environmental implications as to how strong this thing can get. First and foremost, the water temperature, record warm. We know that. We've talked about that a ton on this channel. Look at that. Water temperatures 87, 88, nearing 90 degrees, especially as you get closer to the coast of Florida. Off the western uh, tip of Cuba, extremely warm as well. So that's one of the things that we are watching. And this is why we always need to be cautious as we get into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, into the western Caribbean. So just keep that in mind that even though what I'm about to show you, some of the negative environmental impacts to deter strengthening, we always need to be cognizant just how 
warm and how hot the water is that if it does find something that it likes in the atmosphere, there is plenty of fuel. Another thing that I want to show you, of course, those are the sea surface temperatures, but it's all about that deep warm water as well. This is a product called Tropical Cyclone Heat Potential. When you see the yellows and the oranges and the reds, that's where we not only have extremely warm water, but deep water as well. And you can kind of see it right here, that infamous loop current. You hear about it a lot, especially if you watch a lot of things on tropical meteorology. You can kind of see it right here. This is a very narrow ribbon of extremely warm water, jet fuel, if you will. And if storms go over that, given other pristine atmospheric conditions, they can rapidly intensify. So as we showed you those latest tracks, again, a lot of that takes it someplace over the loop current, whether that goes north and stays over the warmer water for longer, or it bends further to the east, closer to the peninsula of Florida. Still, both of those would cross that water. The thing of it is, though, in order for the storm to take advantage of that, it has to have its inner core developed. And as we saw, that does not appear like it's going to happen very quickly. It stays broad, it interacts with Yucatan, and we also have this. And I'm going to show you some ensemble forecast in a second to kind of show you the range. But we're looking at the Euro model. Again, I want to show you the Euro since it is the strongest of the two and show you why even that is not having it go gangbusters okay so here we go this is going to be saturday at 11 o'clock we're looking at the mid-level moisture for uh the weather nerds out here this is the 700 millibar level and again as we get into sunday still no real big area of low pressure so we may not have a depression form this weekend the one thing that i want to point out here look at this brown this brown is dry air and i think this is going to be one of two things that are really going to help to keep this on the weaker side. Again, this is nothing to let your guard down over. This is something to be extremely mindful of over the weekend because of how hot that water is. But when you're looking to see if this has the potential to just rapidly intensify, look at this. So right now, as of Monday at 3 o'clock, you see that very broad area of low pressure. But look at what it's doing. On that western side still, it is wrapping in a ton of dry air that would keep the western side likely bare. One of the reasons that we'll see here on Monday, this might look like an odd, weird looking system because it's going to be wrapping in a lot of dry air on the western side. So here we go, continuing to go forward. This is Tuesday early in the morning, four o'clock, our area of low pressure here. And again, this is on the stronger representation of that Euro model. Look at all the drier air. So this western side still expecting it to be cut off as it starts to emerge over this extremely warm water. If it does not have that inner core, its engine won't be running efficiently, so to speak, and it won't be able to take advantage of it. Even as we get towards Wednesday at lunchtime, it finally tries to get its act together. But notice there's still some dry air here. And if there's any little sliver of that core not developing efficiently, Look at all the dry air that still resides. And this will also be draped across Florida. So while the potential landfall of whatever this is by the time we get towards either Tuesday or Wednesday, depending upon the overall speed, some of Florida is going to stay completely dry because look at all that dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. And again, the Euro would suggest uh, the Big Bend. That is still remains to be seen where exactly this comes ashore because I'll show you here. You see all this dry air? up towards uh, the Gulf, uh, the deep south into the northern Gulf, uh, Gulf Coast. That is because of a cold front. So this front here, that's the reason why we're likely going to see it lift up and then go over in this direction. That deep trough is going to be pushing this towards Florida. So that's why we are confident anyway that whatever this becomes is going to be heading east towards Florida. We'll fine-tune exactly where the brunt of that would be. The other thing we're watching and what is likely going to be inducing some of that dry air is this big upper level trough. Now, I mentioned one of the favorable things for that system is going to be the extremely warm water, that loop current, if you will. But also helping this thing breathe a little bit is going to be this big area of high pressure. This is up where jet aircraft fly. When you get high pressure on top of a storm, on top of a tropical system anyway, it helps it ventilate. It helps it breathe. So we're going to have that nearby the Bahamas to help it breathe. But... 
Also notice this, coming out of Texas, south of Louisiana, we have that dip in the jet stream. And that is going to help to induce some shear on the western side as well. It's going to help to inject some drier air on this thing. So again, there's a few things that are going to try to help it get a little stronger. But there are some deterrents here. And again, if that western side is getting beat up and ingesting drier air, it's going to be, thankfully, really hard. Again, that is not a foregone conclusion, but that is something that that system is going to have to contend with for most of its life. Again, the water temperature is really warm, so we are going to watch that closely. I want to show you some ensembles really quick here. And you see, again, the European ensembles not really differing from where they've been over the past few days. Each line is a different member with different initial conditions kind of put in. This is how we help to kind of convey the uncertainty just a little bit because while it's developing, we don't really have anything to grasp onto. So while we get this range of outcomes rather than just one model run like I was showing you before, we're looking towards the colors here. And as you get towards, as you get towards uh, the top, of the screen here is your kind of legend and hurricane strength on those lines that you see there would be orange only one of those members of the european ensemble is arguing for something in hurricane strength we have a couple of yellow members up here towards the panhandle because it does stay over water longer so if it does stay over water longer of course it has a higher opportunity to get stronger one of the things we're also watching. But notice if something comes towards South Florida, Southwest Florida, or into Central Florida, most of the members keep that a 50-ish mile per hour, give or take, storm. Again, intensity is going to struggle big, big time. It could be a little stronger, could be weaker. Intensity is one of the things that models really have a problem with. The hurricane models do a much better job with intensity. Those will start to be run by the National Hurricane Center as soon as they designate this an invest or an area of investigation. want to show you the GFS ensembles. We do have more members on board, so we're getting more confidence that we're going to have something and have something trend in this direction, of course. We showed you the steering current, so that is why we are confident in this uh, verifying, but they're even weaker as you would expect, because the parent GFS, which I showed you earlier in this video, is on the weaker side. So again, we have a lot of blues and greens. And again, that's way down here. We're talking 30, 40 knot winds, still tropical storm intensity, even some tropical depression intensity. But that is something that we're going to have to iron out once we get this storm going. And that still remains to be seen. Maybe by Monday or Tuesday, this thing will stop interacting with the Yucatan. And I think that early interaction with land is also going to relatively speaking, keep it on the weaker side and help it to just struggle early on in its life. And again, that's always a positive note when it's struggling early on. I want to show you now Tropical Storm Franklin. This is expected to become a hurricane. It's going to look pretty on satellite. And I can say that because this should not impact land over the next couple of days. We are still watching closely for our friends up in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. You see over the last couple of hours here, the center of low pressure kind of retrograding back and it's very exposed right now. All the thunderstorm activity, even pushing back down towards Puerto Rico, this is what wind shear does. It's under the influence of uh, some northwest winds that have removed the center at the low levels and pushed off all the clouds towards the south and west. And it's kind of cool to see on visible satellite as we zoom in. There is where the center is way out here with hardly any thunderstorms around it. And then all of that convection or thunderstorm activity just kind of hanging out well to the south and to the east of the center and again just like with what you're talking about before this storm cannot intensify if the two aren't located together they need to be stacked on top of each other that's how these tropical storms work they like to be like pancakes straight on a plate if they're tilted any kind of way it doesn't work the engine doesn't work and, it, and that's how these tropical systems intensify so as long as those stay away from each other it's going to stay weak. And that is reflected in the Hurricane Center forecast here. Expected to become a hurricane, though. It's expected to leave that wind shear and become a hurricane by Sunday. And then potentially closing in on major hurricane status as it safely, at least most models anyway, keep this away from Bermuda. But then we're going to be watching for Nova Scotia and then eventually Newfoundland at the top of your screen. Lastly, here is the basin-wide view. The remnants of Emily likely not going to uh, redevelop. You see it influence of wind shear here all the clouds being 
drawn to the top of your screen here, that strong wind blowing north. Still a flare up of thunderstorms with this 50% guy here, Invest 92L. We'll see what happens with that, but it's going to be in that same kind of area over the next few days that it will likely get ripped apart. There's Franklin, of course, and then there's that entity in the Gulf that we just did an extensive breakdown on. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. We are going to be watching this all weekend long. Post in the comments if you have any questions. Again, no one knows what's going to happen with this. I showed you what will likely, hopefully anyway, keep this on the weaker side. But there certainly are things that we are going to be watching closely. Because if that drier air stays removed from that system, the loop current is there. And the water temperatures are super, super warm. So there is that potential anyway. A very outside potential for this thing to ramp up quick. But again, it's my hope that those limiting factors that will be present in the Gulf of Mexico will keep this thing in check. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, we are watching it all weekend long. Keep it right here. We'll have you updated through the early stages of next week as this comes together. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll keep you posted. We'll catch you next time.